Hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Ooh, I almost messed up my own intro. Man, this is going to be a rough one if that's the case. Anyway, my name is Dark Sage Walker, and we are very close to the end of the Signature Arcana Spotlight series. Looks like we're doing piano again. Just want to make sure that that's what I'm on. All right, cool. So, there are only two left. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that I managed to get through all of these in such a quick amount of time. And yes, we have some excited birds in the background. So, today we're going to go with Phantom Brigade, one of the recipients of one of the worst nerfs I can possibly think of, because at some point or another, this counted as melee, which meant it had... It had Dark Katana Synergy. It no longer has that, and yet I still consider it one of the best spells in the game, just because it's so easy to use. Basically, you walk into a group of enemies, you press the B button, and you just let your squad go at it. What that means is that, by all accounts, this is one of the spells with the absolute lowest skill floor I can possibly think of, because all you do is just press a button and just let your crew go do their thing. It does all the aiming for you, it does all the attacks for you, there's no need to think. You just walk into a group, press the B button, and watch everyone take swords up their butts for a few seconds. Another thing about this one is that it also used to count as a summon, which meant that... Sorry, which means that if you were using it with the pop-up primer... I went to the wrong thing. Man, see, this is this is what I mean. Sometimes I just don't think. But yeah, if you had, yeah, the pop-up primer, it would summon an additional knight. Which, of course, because this spell... Th these guys are intangible. They can't necessarily be hit or damaged while you're doing your business. Which means that any... And any time you use the spell with the pop-up primer active, or at least this used to be the case, it was just straight up more DPS for with no downside. <clears throat> and then because you know we can't ha we can't be can't be having all that fun around here, they decided no, that's that's too powerful. And honestly, if I'm being real, yeah, that's a little little powerful. Is a little nuts. So, I don't blame them for toning down the power of Phantom Brigade, but at the same time, I can still be a little salty that even for as good as this spell is, as well as Brain Dead, it used to be so much better. It, it's just, it just makes me sad to see what became of this spell. Oh yeah, what did become of this spell, Dark Sage? Okay, it's still one of the best spells in the game, all right? Shut up. I'm simply getting my my point across that it was ever so slightly different than it is now, and even with the changes that nerfed the spell down, it's still one of the best spells in the game. Still love it. So, since, the, <clears throat> since Phantom Brigade is handling a lot of trouble for us, all we really need to do is pick a few spells that are just going to do right by us. Like, there doesn't necessarily need to be any cohesion here. It's really just more so, how do we keep the hordes in check? And there's multiple ways to do that. I think the way that I'm going to choose to do it is with just a little bit of sensible control. Like, in this case, I think Tidal Blast is definitely a good choice. I think I choose... Honestly, Magma Rush sounds good. And as far as our... Basic... Oh, we could pick the Bladed Vine and just be an evil Taskmaster. Or we could go with the Sensible option. Well, I'm nothing if not a shrewd master, so we're going with that. So, in this setup, 
The Phantom Brigade is essentially acting as more of a control method than anything else. So, what would be best to use with this would probably be some means of cooldown reduction. And we could do that either with the Tempo Robe or go with just a Strength Improving Robe and then start with the Roxel's Pendulum, which I think is the best option. The other thing I'm thinking is that with a build like this, going with a going with a more balanced setup like with the hope robe is also not a bad idea. And you guys know how I feel about using summon type builds with the builds with the venture robe. Like, I'm tempted to go with it just because this is what I tend to like tend to like to use when I have when I have a build that tends to focus on keeping guys off of me. So real quick. I just want to point out the cooldown time, which is about, what is it, about 8 seconds? Which is why I want to go with something that reduces cooldowns. Yeah, it's an 8 second cooldown on this spell, so... Yeah, you definitely need to make sure you're using this when the time is right, because that above average length cooldown, that, that can really stay. Alright, I've changed my mind. I think I am going with the tempo robe. And then we will start with this. Just kind of get the best of, best of all worlds going on here. Oh, we don't even have to wait for the floor plan. Sweet! Not, I'm not saying that I'm impatient, but god, I'm impatient. And I think we can just go. Oh, we don't even have to deal with Atlas this time around. Oh, I am a happy boy. And when you use the signature version, you summon Elemental Knights. It's almost like they were going, okay, we already have a very strong spell. How do we even turn this into a signature? Then someone at the dev team said, I know, add status effects. You're a genius. Don't hide that light under a bushel basket. Now, another reason why I said that with this one, you can pretty much just take whatever you want into combat with you, is you're not going to be putting a lot of strong focus on straight-up combos. Not traditional combos, anyway. Because of how this spell works, chaining other things together into it is somewhat difficult, but simultaneously stupidly easy because you don't really have to think of, you don't really have to worry about spacing, you don't have to worry about positioning, you don't really have to do anything aside. Oh, and they hit the nitroglycerin barrels. Like, this spell is just stupidly powerful for. <laughs> just because of how automatic it makes everything.
Now, obviously, it doesn't interact with enemy projectiles, but that's fine because it's not a projectile in and of itself. If anything, it's a summon, and because the spell was maybe a little too broken with the summon synergies, they decided to make it count as nothing. Some of those synergies were just a little too powerful. Especially for a spell as absolutely easy to use as this one. Now, I want you to understand, I don't have an issue with a spell being easy to use. I kind of wish I had come here way earlier, because there's a lot of things here that I want. Give me that. Give me that. And then, yes, I would love the jewelry box and the flip-flops, but there's so much that I can do right now. Let's talk to Nocturne, and we'll go get the upgraded Tidal Blast after I see what he's willing to offer. Oh, Jeebus, are you serious? Okay, well, we'll definitely take that, because this spell rocks. Hmm... I'm just trying to decide how I play this. Like, there's so many good things I could take. And then I think our next best thing is increased survival. Alright. What an eventful floor, like this, like we just got ridiculous, like almost instantaneously, now we just need damage ups. Go beat down crew! Now, one downside to this spell, I know, it's hard to think, hard to even think of a downside for a spell like this, but if you use it a little too far away from a group of enemies, it will just kind of fizzle out and do nothing. Now, I'm going to try to exemplify that as little as possible, because, I mean, why would I, why would I want my spell to do nothing most of the time? That, that would just be silly. But... It is an option. Or I'm, I'm not going to say an option, because you don't want to use that option. But it is a thing that can happen. So, you want that thing to happen as infrequently as possible, because that's basically just eight seconds of doing nothing while you're... while you're... you just stand there and stare into oblivion. You don't even need to face your enemies. Like, these guys just do all the hard work for you. They hit frequently, so if you are running a critical hit setup, they will trigger critical hits frequently enough just because of how often they hit.
Like, if I'm being completely honest, this probably is just due to the nature of the spell. One of the one of the best, if not the best spell in the game for most purposes. Like, I can act as butthurt as I want about the idea that they nerfed this spell, but I think if they didn't, this spell would eventually gain sentience and start rampaging the countryside. Like, this spell just really does that much for your build. Like, when your build focuses around Phantom Brigade, you you basically already won. You've already won, your enemies just don't know it yet. And it's like you you summon the knights on your side, and it's like the enemies go, Oh, hey, Tim! I remember you! We used to work at Wendy's before! And then Tim just says, I don't care. And just beats his face in. Easy enough. I don't want to change my basic, but thanks for giving me the opportunity. Even though I probably should, considering I'm going up against Shu later. And as you can see, if, as soon as there are no enemies in their very immediate vicinity, they will just piss off. Again, that's not even necessarily a bad thing, I'm just pointing it out because it's a thing. I struggle to really come up with any other nuance on this spell. Like, it's so powerful. And you... it's... And it's not even that it's powerful, it's that it's powerful and you don't have to put in any effort for it to be powerful. And it's a chaos spell, so it just so it just comes pre-upgraded if even if you don't put it as your signature. The best way to put it, put how this spell works is, you know how when you're playing like a, like a Souls game and you end up losing to a particular boss for like the 30th time, you're just like, okay, that's it. And you pull out that one weapon that you're, that you've upgraded like a thousand times and you're way too comfortable with. That's what this is. This is just the fuck it, I want to win button.
Yeah, that was a bad dodge on my behalf. Whoops. Alright. So I think I want this. I want to adopt the fairy. And that'll be a nice little temporary holdover until I can find a better damage up. Go beatdown squad! I should point out another actual negative aspect of this spell, which is because everything is automatic, you don't really have any control over who they target. They will just do their thing. Which, you know, in, in a big group melee, that's fine. I certainly don't have any problem with that, but when you are trying to beat down a boss and it spend and the beatdown squad spends all their time going after the minions, that feels a little iffy. You'll notice that the only rooms that I really seem to struggle with are the ones where there's like 30 elemental minions and they're all they're all throwing area of effects out at me. Now, a good portion of what's happening here could be attributed to just good old-fashioned overconfidence. But we should also stop and uh, stop and think about where we, where that idea stems from. And especially when you have a spell this this easy to use and this powerful, it's hard not to get a little overconfident. Ooh, a freebie. So we should be able to get ourselves a nice, a nice, powerful, adorable mimic to work to work with this. And since we now have a signature, let's quickly start this fight. Hey, how you like that double signature there? Alright, now let's go ahead and drop over here in the corner all the things we want to keep. Because we want to keep that, we want to keep that, we want to keep that, we want to keep that. And we don't and we don't sacrifice fairies to mimics. Everything else can go. There we go. Plus 55. That is juicy. And since we have an abundance of cash, why not just buy a healing potion? Because let's be- Oh, I forgot a freebie! Oh, I could have been plus 60! Not 
that I'm complaining, mind you. I mean, I am. It's not that loudly. Thanks, Beatdown Squad. Though, did I really need the Beatdown Squad's help with such an easy boss? Thanks to the power boost from the adorable Mimic, I'm getting signature just about every room now. And yet, rooms like that where they put you in unnecessarily tight quarters will still be a pain. Also address the issue of Phantom Brigade doesn't necessarily do the largest amount of damage of all the signatures. This is definitely a spell that you're using to help control the field. So don't rely on this to get all your kills, but at the same time, don't don't underestimate it either, because the idea that it's such a essentially free control option really makes things really makes things nice and easy on you. Eh, let's grab it. Where are, where are you? Eh, let's grab it. There's nothing here I want. This is probably a little early to be asking this question, but what is you guys' take on the Phantom Brigade? Like, I know I've kind of pissed on a few spells before saying, oh, it just makes the game too easy, but I don't think that holds true any more so than with this spell. I don't even necessarily want that. As far as why I'm getting beaten up so badly, it's... I mean, let's just call it like it is. I'm being way too overconfident with this spell. Like, I'm just walking into groups of enemies and just not dodging is what it really boils down to. Oh, pardon me.
Okay. And when you have a spell this this automatic, you barely even have to think, and that sometimes can lead to problems. But this is also a good opportunity for me to remind you that just because you have something strong in your back pocket to use doesn't mean that you neglect the fundamentals. You still need to have something good to back it up with. You still need to, you know, dodge. Like, you still need to preserve yourself. It just becomes a lot easier when you have something like this. I saw an unbirthday present up there. I want to reach it. Happy unbirthday to me, and well, sadly, it doesn't really help that much. But it is nice to see a lot of things that really go with high movement, high octane builds. And you know how much I like spells that give you burst movement. And I suppose I would also be remiss of my duties if I didn't also say that that the Phantom Brigade does make things a little chaotic. Like it, it can sometimes be hard to differentiate friend from foe while you're using this. That's not because it's hard to tell which knights are yours and which ones aren't. It's just it just does create a lot of visual clutter. So it's something that you need to be aware of. But that doesn't make this spell necessarily any weak. Thanks, guys. Game really wants me to pick up that Mystic Monopole. To which I say nay! Nay to you! Thank you, Beatdown Crew. And that this is once again attributed to the idea that you don't have to aim, you don't have to you don't have to take any special precautions when positioning, you just let it loose.
Owie. All right. I think we're good. We'll just open this fight up with a Phantom Brigade signature and see how much of his health bar we can wipe out. Nice and simple. Beautifully done. See what I mean? When you don't have to worry about anything like positioning or aiming or, you know, thinking. It, this spell is just so stupid powerful. Like, all those minions that you, that you see in beat-em-up games. Like, that's what you've got at your disposal here. You've got just an infinite, inexhaustible supply of Garcias and Donovans and Williams. And it's a sh it's just a shame they didn't give us, like, a phantom macho ghoul, because then I could say you get an Abobo. Ugh. Yeah, this spell is absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's definitely a good reward for getting through the game and you know, mastering the trials to beat Sura. I would almost argue that it's too good of a reward. Like, this... Like, it really makes it easy to just turn off your brain. And it's also the only phantom spell that gets to be a signature. So, it's... It sits in this privileged position, which gives all of your permanents hexproof, but... I mean, it's... It sits head, head and shoulders above all the other phantoms, and almost arguably above almost every other signature in the game, almost. But it's, again, like I said, it's not all upside. It does create a lot of visual clutter, and damage-wise, there are better signatures. Let's just be straight up. There are better damaging signatures out there. But just for sheer control, it's really hard to beat this spell. Like, the only other thing I can think of, as far as signatures are concerned, that's about as brain dead is Spark Array. And that's. Oof, that's already a top tier spell. But I think you guys get the point. Phantom Brigade, really stupid powerful. And I'm glad I got to show it to you guys. There's only one more Arcana left for the Signature Arcana Spotlight series. And then I can just really sit down and hammer out the tier lists. So thank you guys very much for coming and spending some of your free time here with me today. I really do appreciate it. I also appreciate your patience with me. All of it means the world to me. So thank you guys very much. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Obviously, the birds want to say goodbye, too. Oh, fuck you. Now I want you to chirp and you don't. You little bastards. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and take care, everybody.